What is going on guys? Grave here. Welcome back to the Division 2 and today we received Title Update 10. Now these are some very lengthy patch notes. I'm going to link them down in the description below if you guys would like to read over them for yourself. This is going to be a bit longer video than I usually do here on the channel because of the length of these patch notes. I'm going to kind of go over the high points so you guys can kind of get an idea of what's going on. But like I said, if you want to read everything in detail, definitely check out the patch notes down in the description. Of course, they talked about a lot of the things that are going to be coming to the game. Uh, kind of at the end of the month and later on. Of course, the new raid Operation Iron Horse will be available at the end of the month on June the 30th. Uh, there will be a level 40 and a level 30 version. The level 30, 40 version will be out first on the 30th of June, and then the level 30 version will follow uh, the coming next week, the next coming week. Discovery mode will not be available in the new raid until a later date. Of course, they talked about a lot of balance and bug fixes and missing locate, uh, localized audio. They did talk about the new exotics that are coming to the game with season two, which of course starts at the end of the month of uh, at the end of the month as of June as well. Uh, on June the twenty third, Keener's Legacy will start with twelve weeks of in game activities and rewards. Um, with this or with this new, of course, season and of course new um, raid coming at the end of the month, we're going to get the Mana Sniper Rifle, the Vile Mass, the Double Barrel Rifle, the Ravenous, of course, that's Operation Iron Horse Drop, and the Magnum Pistol, the Regulus, which will also be an Operation Iron Horse Drop. When it comes to new gear sets, the Eclipse Protocol will be available everywhere. The Foundry, uh, the Foundry set and the Future set will also be Operation Iron Horse Drops only. When it comes to the new gear brand set walker harrison co of course that's going to be added into the loot pool to be able to drop everywhere some new named weapons the mechanical animal which is a sig 556 and the harmony which is a mk47 some new named gear which is the matador which is a walker harrison co backpack with perfect adrenaline rush now there will be a new skill variant that will be showing up called repair trap this will uh line out kind of a small line of repair traps that will be able to repair friendlies in the proximity why they're adding this right now into the game i have no clue because it says the repair trap will not be available in game until seasonal prime target unlocks in august so this shows to be available right now but it's not going to be available till august not quite sure why that was added in now when it comes to talents there's a new weapon talent called future uh, perfect a new weapon talent called in sync a new backpack talent called adrenaline rush and a new chest talent called headhunter now when it comes to gameplay changes they reduced how many elites will spawn in manning national zoo coney island a uh, ballpark and coney island amusement park camp white oak space administration hq federal emergency bunker wall street liberty, uh, liberty island pathway park stranded tanker and the tombs now when it comes to loot they have redone the loot pool a good bit which i think is going to be uh, for the better in the game and just in general i know a lot of you out there get tired of getting sorry loot when you're playing hard things they added all new season two weapons and gear to the general loot pools the item power uh, they updated the item power dis distribution to have a better spread between minimum and maximum for all difficulties they increased the minimum rolled item power for field proficiency and dz caches clan caches and season caches also difficulty scaling regular loot from loot containers and missions will now scale to the mission difficulty the same goes for targeted loot and loot containers will now scale to the mission difficulty and loot containers part of the living world activities now scale with your global difficulty that you have your uh, that you have it set to in your particular game so you know if you have it set to normal uh, of course and on up you will get loot scaled to fit your global difficulty when it comes to targeted loot uh, the chances from all missions and control points have been increased added to uh, added the season two brand target to the loot rotation and all of the warlords of new york brands can now show up in loot in dc including the dark zones you will now see some of that loot besides just being in new york uh, they increase the name item drop chance in the regular dark zone loot and increase the name item drop chance in the targeted loot everywhere they added the Warlords of New York Season 1 season one Exotics, excluding the Bighorn, to targeted loot. And they also added those Warlords of New York Season 1 Exotics uh, to the general loot pool. Of course, that's also excluding the Bighorn once again. But that loot pool, of course, scales from Heroic, Legendary, Raid, Exotic Caches. So all of those weapons will be available from New York Season 1. But that uh, 
one weapon, of course, the Bighorn. Now, control points, remove the regular weapon gear loot containers, not scaling with difficulty from control points, and increase the amount of scaling loot from the big uh, control point reward container. So that big orangish yellow looking box should now drop a little bit better loot. And I'm overall, I think all of the boxes should be dropping a little bit better loot now, now that this change is going live. They increase the NPC loot drop chance for veteran and elites on legendary difficulty. Crafting will now guarantee a higher minimum item power resulting in higher overall stat rolls. Uh, as of late, of course, if you go to craft a weapon, you may roll 40 or 50 weapons or a piece of gear and they will have absolutely just trash <laughs> uh, stats on them. So hopefully that is going to get fixed. I mean, that gets very annoying wasting all those parts for really just trash rolls. So hopefully this new uh, change to the crafting will work a lot better than it has in the past and we'll get some better rolls on the things that you are trying to create. Removed final world tier 5 crafting bench upgrade. They says it is now pretty much redundant so that has been removed from the crafting table. Vendors that added name items to both open world and dark zone vendors. They increased the price for named items. They increased the item power for all vendors and vendors will no longer sell purple or superior quality items if you are max level. Uh, they also did some changes to rogue agent encounters. Every rogue agent that is killed will now drop loot and rogue agent account uh, encounters will no longer occur during time trial events. Uh, control point officers, players revived by a control point officer will now have 80% of their armor restored, which was previously zero and reduced the likelihood of a control point officer being downed in combat. Bounties acquired by speaking to characters in the open world will always be set to the difficulty at the time of acquisition or higher. So if your world is on normal, you will get bounties on normal or higher. If your world is on challenging, now you will get bounties on challenging or higher. It was very annoying before you're playing on a heroic or challenging world. You get a bounty that's normal. That was just kind of bad. So that has now been fixed. There will be a new season pass holder project slot a weekly SHD requisition project slot and a legendary mission project slot added into the projects in the game. Also, uh, R uh, RPG balance incoming repairs. Uh, repairs no longer increase the amount of armor repaired by armor kits, talents, or gear set effects. Uh, weapon. They've also changed the way weapon handling works. Uh, there also has been some changes to certain talents like leadership, spike, reinforcement, and creeping death. Uh, they have changed the global damage modifiers. They reduced all PvP weapon damage by 20%. Additional damage modifiers. They increased some things in PvP, but not everything. Uh, also, what they did here with the uh, exotic modifiers, the exotics all received a buff. Gear sets, Negotiator's Dilemma also received a buff. The skill modifiers, they uh, also received a buff for your skills like uh, your assault drone or your assault turrets, your striker drone, those kind of things all received buffs. When it comes to assault rifles, just about every single assault rifle in the game received a damage increase from anywhere around 3% all the way up to, you know, up to upwards of 20%. When it comes to LMGs, the same thing, around 2% to around a 15% increase. The MMR is, of course, the same, around a 2% to a 15% increase. Rifles all received uh, buffs as well except the classic M1A got a 12% damage decrease. The police MK-17, the military MK-17, the urban MDR, and the USC-45 ACP all received nerfs to their damage. Everything else received buffs. Now, when it comes to SMGs, everything received a damage increase from around 5% all the way up to around 30%. Shotguns the same, sidearms the same. And like I said, when it comes to exotics, a lot of these exotics received big buffs like the Chameleon. Uh, uh, the, even the Bullet King received a bit of a damage increase. They're trying to make the exotics overall be more useful to use. Right now, there's a lot of just base weapons in the game that are better than the exotics. These big buffs to the exotics hopefully will make them a little bit more viable. But at the same time, they buffed all the other weapons as well. So I'm not quite sure... If it's going to kind of just balance out, balance out and be like it was where, 
you know, the exotics are just okay, but the, uh, there's some other weapons in the game that are a lot better. But like I said, guys, all these patch notes are linked down in the description below if you guys would like to read over them for yourself. And of course, if you like the video, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. If you are a subscriber, make sure you click the bell icon up in the top right corner so you know when all my videos go live. If you have a chance, share the video. It does help out the channel a lot. And be sure to check out GT Racing. They are the affiliate here on the channel. And all their information is linked down in the description. And I'll catch you all next time. Peace.